worthy of praise and God is worthy of adoration. How many love Jesus tonight? Amen. Amen. Again, technical difficulties. Praise the Lord, right? God will love it. But we're working on it. Amen? Amen. Yeah. We've already got a new computer in the back. And we're, we, don't, we don't have it um, all connected yet, but we're working on it. And then we're going to get a new camera, get some new things going on. We've already talked about it some. And so you be praying and that God will help us get it all worked out. Amen? Amen. Yeah. We're excited about it. Got that new computer back there. Love to hook it up right now, but it's not ready. We just put it in there this afternoon. Amen. But you pray for us that God will help us get it together. Amen. Amen. Because why have all this stuff? It's not going to work, right? Right. But like I said, I preached many, many times without all this fancy stuff, right? Yeah. But God will help us. But this time we receive the Thursday evening tithe and offering. All Christians pay time, amen? amen. And gladly given offerings as unto the Lord. Somebody recently told me that they don't they don't pay tithe uh, in the way that Protestant churches teach it nowadays. They don't believe in bringing it to the church. They said they believe in paying tithe in the Jewish way. And then I kind of scratched my head because they said they just give it to the poor. That's not what the Jewish tithe method of tithe was for, even by Jewish standards. And and tithe was instituted before the law. Right? And so where did they tithe go to? They didn't go to poor. It was first brought to Melchizedek, as we read about in the Bible, right? That he wasn't poor. Because who we know who Melchizedek was the Lord, right? And so they they even have a misconception about Jewish tithe, and, and tithe was instituted before the law, and tithe has not been done away with either. And it was under the law, and in the New Testament, Jesus talks about it again. And it was not done away with, but Christians pay tithe. Amen? Amen. And so so well, well, preacher, but why? Why are you just doing it for money? <laughs> uh, on contrary, we're not doing it for just for the money, but we do it to keep the lights on. He said, bring the tithe into the storehouse, into the temple, that Amen. that there might be meat in my house, right? To take care of the work of the Lord. And it's surprising how people think that everything is free in church. Well, I've never been to a church where everything is free. Every time I, I turn on the electricity, they, they want a bill. They want me to pay the bill. When I go to Walmart, when we feed you guys, they want me to pay the bill. And it's not getting any cheaper, all right? And all these different things. And so this is where the finances go to, to pay the bills, the mortgages, the insurance, the upkeep, the various things that we need to do. And so you give us unto the Lord, pay your tithe, amen? And if you just believe God, God will bless you, amen? And so we can go online at our website at www.mymtcc.org slash Junction City KS or on Cash App, dollar sign, NTCC Junction City. Very easy. If you don't know how to give online, talk to one of us. We'll tell you how to do it or the good old-fashioned way. I know most people don't carry cash anymore, but if you have cash, put it in the offering. And, and we don't have to ignore Brother Ron or, or when Jim helps to take, receive the offering. Don't ignore these guys. Don't look at them like they have the plague. So, and then you then you pretend like you're giving online with your phone. Well, that's great if you're giving online. I get the report. I know who gives online, and I know who doesn't give online. Amen. Because I get the reports, I get the emails, and it shows up. All right. So, don't don't be lying about it. Amen. How many love Jesus? Amen. All right. So give us up to the Lord, and God will bless you. For the rounds here, please pray. Ask God to bless the gift of the giver. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your love, your peace, and your mercy you have shown us. We thank you, Lord, for each and every soul you brought out. Most of all, Lord, we pray that you bless the gift of the giver according to your word. In Jesus' precious and wonderful name we pray. Amen. Amen. <laughs>
different kind of God that we serve. Amen? Amen. Yeah. Also, glad to find out that Brian told me he was on his way to NTC, but that changed. So praise God for that. Amen. We're glad to be able to stick around. Are you glad? Sure. Amen. You had all that gear that he's missing. If you'd like to and you have your Bibles or on your phone or whatever the case may be, Mark chapter 2. I guess you have to pay attention to nothing to read, right? That doesn't mean you go to your Facebook or your, your Instagram or your Snapchat or in church, right? Pay attention. How's that sound? Okay. I've had people in church before that will check their Facebook feeds and do all kinds of stuff in church. There's just one lady a place where in Jacksonville where used to be yeah, she was always on her phone in church <laughs> so well I, I'm, I'm uh, looking up verses of scripture <laughs> Mark chapter 2 verses 1 through 5 and again he entered into Capernaum after some days and it was noise that he was in the house and straight many, many were gathered together insomuch that there was no room to receive them no not so much as about the door, and he preached the word unto them. And they come unto him, bringing one sick of the palsy, which was born of four. And when they could not come nigh unto him for the press, they uncovered the roof where he was, and when they had broken it up, they let down the bed wherein the sick of the palsy lay. When Jesus saw their faith, he said unto the sick of the palsy, Son, thy sins be forgiven thee. How many glad that Jesus is still able to forgive sins? Amen. Amen. Reverend Palmer, sir, please pray. Thank you, Lord, for the reading of your divine word this evening. Help us to receive all that you would have for us now. Deal with our hearts, Lord. Draw us closer unto you. Show us exactly what you have us to do this night, Lord. Be with Pastor now as he breaks forth the bread of life unto your people. And we give you praise and the glory in Christ's name. Amen. 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 In our Bible reading that we read to you, we read about a city that seemingly was changed overnight. A city where there was life, excitement, and healing. There was the presence of the Lord, and the word of God was being preached and received in an amazing way. You know what I'm gonna say again? I am thankful for the power of God and the power of his eternal word. How many are thankful for that tonight? And I'd like to entitle this message tonight, Revival on a Rooftop. I believe we still need revival in the land, amen? Just think about it. It was a revival in the way things came to life. It was centered upon four men who tore up the rooftop to bring their friends to Jesus. You know what? These guys were absolutely serious about bringing their friends to Jesus. You know what I thought about that? Real friends bring friends to Jesus. Can I say it again? Real friends bring friends to Jesus. There were some things that came to life in our setting that I want to begin to focus on. And, you know, we all know that we are living in a serious time. A serious time for our nation, for our cities, and for our world. And when you stop and you look at it, seemingly things are getting worse by the moment. Amen? We already know this. The economy is hanging by a thread. People are losing hope. Our politicians can't get along with each other. You know what? We need revival in the land. Amen? A real Holy Ghost devil stopping revival in America, in Kansas, in Junction City, in me and in you. We need revival in the land. Amen. But let's look at some of these things that came to life when there's revival. First of all, we find that conversations came to life. Conversation is a two-edged sword. It can spread revival, but can also kill revival in a church and in a person's life. The word conversation means two things. The way that we talk, and number two, the way that we live. You know what? The way that we talk and the way that we live should be in agreement. What, what am I saying? What you say, you ought to walk that way. Amen to that? When we really allow the Spirit of God to be genuine, and real in our hearts and our lives, uh, then we'll begin to see harmony in the things that we say and the way that we live. Uh, I believe we ought to do our best to practice what we preach. Can I get a witness? Yeah. I understand we are not perfect. And we need to pray and we need to work on ourselves. But thank God for people who are trying. 
Now, it cannot be denied that when Jesus entered in Capernaum, the place came alive. There's something about it when Jesus comes on the scene. And I don't know about you, I didn't know about most of you. We want God to come on the scene. And we want Jesus to walk with us and to meet with us and to be with us in every service that we have. Amen? Oh, but pastor, I'm tired. Well, so am I. But we need to allow God to move in a mighty way. Correct? The first thing that we notice is the people started talking. The Bible said it was noise that he was in the house. How did everyone know that he was there? People began to talk. Did you hear? Guess what? The Lord is here. It's going to be good. I can't wait. I heard about that man, Jesus. You heard about him, right? Yeah, I heard about him. Guess what? He's right down the street in the house. Hey, we need to go find out what's going on. You know what I believe? That we need to do the same thing. Wait a minute. Did you hear? We're going to have revival. People are going to get saved. And God's going to touch people. And God's going to meet with us. Did you hear? Let me tell you about the Lord called Jesus. Oh no, we're like, um, um, and yeah, right. Mm -hmm. The person that didn't want to pay their tithe, but only the Jewish way, they also said they don't clap and get excited because they don't want to go through the emotions. And I thought about that. You know what? We need to read our Bibles. We need to read our Bibles. The Bible even says that when somebody gets saved, the angels in heaven rejoice. The Bible talks about 24 elders that danced before the throne of God. We read about how the King David danced when the ark of the Lord was brought back into the city. He rejoiced. Why? Because the ark meant the presence of the Lord. We read about when Jesus came into the city and the people cried out, Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna. And God, Jesus said, if they don't cry out, the rocks are going to cry out. What, is, what do you mean going through the emotions? I want you to know our God is an emotional God. I believe that our God likes to laugh. He said, if my heart do good like a medicine and bless your heart, so many you need some medicine. Really, you read the Bible. He said, let everything that has breath, what? Praise the Lord. Praise him in the dance. Praise him in the song. Praise him on the instruments. We need to praise the Lord. I don't want to go through the emotions. Whatever. You do what you ever want to do, but I'm going to live by the Bible. Amen? Amen. The help of the Lord. What do you think would happen in our church if we started talking like these people? I believe that we can get excited for Jesus. Amen. I would say amen right now, preacher, but I, I, I don't want to go through the emotions. It's amazing the things that you hear as a pastor. I believe we can get excited for Jesus. Amen. You know, just recently I shared this before, they got excited when the when Kansas City, they won the Super Bowl. They had a big old parade for them in Kansas City, sitting out there in the cold weather. They got out there hours ahead of time, and they got excited. Oh, because there was Mahomes uh, and Trees, whatever the guy's name was, and all these players are out there, and they're cheering their team. But no, we can't do that for Jesus, can we? When we get that way, we're fanatics. We're labeled weird. Uh, and I, no, what's wrong with you? You're a bunch of holy rollers. Uh, it's all right. I want to be a holy roller. I want to be holy because he said, be you holy as I am holy. And my name's written down in the Lamb's Book of Life. Uh, my name is on the heavenly roll. But guess what? I guess I'm a holy roller. I'd rather be a holy roller for God than a holy roller for the, or I'm a holy roller for the devil. Just saying. Amen. Amen. I believe you can get excited for Jesus. Yeah. You get what you expect. If you begin to expect a blessing and a move of God, well, bless your heart, that's exactly what you're going to get. If you expect a long, boring time, that's what you're going to get. We get what we expect. Amen. 
I think together we can be excited about the goodness of the Lord and what God's doing in his house. It was noise abroad that he was there. We need to let people know we got revival. We got church service. We got Bible study. We got a breakfast coming up. We're going to go bowling. It's going to be a good time. I want you to know sinners don't have a corner on the market and having a good time. I believe that we as a people of God, we got Jesus on the inside. We can have a good time too. That doesn't mean that pump my body full of a chemical to have a good time. I don't need to take the spirits from the liquor store and pour it on the inside. Oh, but what I want is the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost moving. And I want you to know we can have a good time being a Christian. Maybe you got the wrong spirit. Let us know as it abroad the goodness of the Lord. How many would say that God's been good to you? I understand that church services like this are different for some people. It was different for me the first time, too. And I looked around thinking, oh, my goodness, what have I got myself into? But before I left that night, I gave my life to the Lord. God forgave me of my sin. Oh, he washed it away as far as the east is from the west. And the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us from all sin. The Bible said, I walked in there miserable and wretched, but I walked out a new creature in Christ Jesus. I looked at those folks raising their hands. I think, oh, my goodness. He's a bunch of holy rollers around here. Oh, but before it's all said and done, I begin to raise my hands. I begin to worship my God because the Bible said, I will let men pray everywhere, lifting up holy hands, pray without wrath and doubting. I've got a right to raise my hands. I've got a right to praise the Lord. We need a revival. There's no better proven method of spreading news but by the word of mouth. It works better than a card. It works better than a sign. It works better than a pamphlet or an email. These things are useful, they're good. But just giving a card out is not enough. We need to tell them. We need to share the good news. Hey, here's a card. You want to come to church? Here's a card. You want to come to church? Here's a card. You want to come to church? Here's a. I met my quota. I can tell Pastor I invited three people tonight. All good. Well, wait a minute. If you put something behind that invite, if you put some enthusiasm and some love and compassion of God behind that invite, who knows? They may just say yes. Amen. People want everybody's gonna say no. Jonathan didn't say no. Oh. I didn't say no, you didn't say no, come on now. We need to tell them. What do people hear? What do they hear when they're around us? Every one of us have fallen short in this category. Sometimes we're a bunch of negative Nancys. There's nobody here named Nancy, is there? One time I said something about every gossip of Sally Mae, the lady in church, her name was Sally Mae. And, and, and she was a good, good lady. She's still living for God. Yeah. Right? In St. Louis, when I was pastoring her in St. Louis. I knew her first name was Sally, but I didn't know her middle name was May. And I said, so she came to me, she said, Pastor, you know my middle name was May. I'm like, oh. And she just laughed. She didn't get all offended and battled out of shape. So, praise the Lord. But we don't need to be a negative nasty. We need to be sure that our words are filled with praise, compliments, appreciation, and encouragement. We fail at that sometimes, don't we? Yes, sir. So what do we need to do? We need to look to Jesus for our example, correct? In Psalm 50, verse 23, he said, Whoso offereth praise glorifieth me, and to him that ordered his conversation aright will I show the salvation of God. I want you to know we need to be sure we have to be sure our conversation is correct. Amen? Amen. Then in 1 Timothy chapter 4 it says, Let no man despise thy youth, but be thou an example of the believers in word, in conversation, in charity, in spirit, in faith, in purity, till I come, give attendance to reading and to exhortation and to doctrine. I want you to know we have a lot to live up to, don't we? I like this. When Jesus showed up, how many want Jesus to show up? Or are we just going to come here on a Thursday night and say, whatever, que sera, sera, whatever will be, will be. No, that's not what we want. We don't want it to 
Jesus kick it off that I went to church on a Thursday night. I want Jesus to show up in every activity, in every service, in every prayer meeting, even when we go bowling tomorrow night. Amen? Jesus needs to help me. Please. When Jesus showed up, conversations changed. Hearts were lifted. Frowns were turned to smiles. And discouraged minds found hope. Because with Jesus comes revival. Amen. With Jesus comes life. With Jesus comes hope. This is what we need in our lives. Amen? Amen. And I like this. It was a great day when I was born again. How many are glad you've been born again of the Spirit of Almighty God? We realize, we admitted that we were sinners. We acknowledge that Jesus died and he rose again on the third day to set us free. And we confessed and we asked him into our heart and in our life. And then by the power of God, we were born again of the Spirit of Almighty God. And God forgave us. God made us all. He took our broken life and put it back together again. Church, if you've never done that, tonight is a great night to be born again. You may say you're a crazy preacher, but you give your life to God, you walk out of here and say, man, I now I know what the preacher was talking about. He told me about Jesus, and I wanted to be noised abroad that my God is still able to save. He's able to deliver. He's able to fill the mind and the heart and make it rise. The church attendance and the assembly of people came to life. Because it was noise, what do you think happened next? You know, it's a proven principle in life, in marketing and sales and promotion, even in church. If we tell them, they will come. If we tell them, they will come. But again, it's more than just saying, hello. Would you like to come to church? Okay. Would you like to come to church? I am a robot for Jesus. Oh, are you with me now? But if we tell them and compel them and motivate them, I believe they'll come. Not everybody's going to come, but I believe people are going to come. Thank God for those that invited me that didn't give up on me. Amen? Yeah. What happened next should be every Christian's hope and prayer. The house was filled. Mark 2 and 2, and straightway many were gathered together, insomuch that there was no room to receive them, no, not so much as about the door, and he preached the word unto them. The assembly came to life. People filled the place like never before. Before Christ came, it was quiet, humdrum, dead. Say, well, preacher, no one's going to come fill this church up. I rebuke you. <laughs> because I believe it can happen. Amen. Come on now. How do you know? And I'm not trying to beat a dead horse to death because I've seen, I've seen this church filled before. Amen. Amen. Amen? Well, that was a long time ago. It was a long time ago. When I was here before living in beautiful Junction City, Kansas. Amen? Oh, you said that kind of like, hey, yes, sir. Amen. It's really beautiful. This is a place you got saved. Amen. And the thing about it is I remember two Sunday morning services. I remember Sunday night service. I remember Saturday night service. I, I remember ladies' Bible studies. I, I remember evening Bible studies. I remember all kinds of stuff. And we were busy and all get out. And the place will hop. And I believe that we need revival. It can happen again because we need to tell them about Jesus. Amen. It was quiet. It was humdrum. I don't want humdrum. I don't want dead. I don't want quietness. Why? Because Jesus is here. Jesus is here. Jesus is here. When Jesus is in the house, things are exciting. And when Jesus is in your house, in the heart of your house, everything's going to be all right. And it's going to be exciting. I don't want to go through the emotions. Maybe you ought to just get on in and get up and get excited. Unglue yourself from the seat that you're sitting in and shout a great big amen. Clap those hands. Raise those hands. You might find out you just might like it. Well, that's just not my style of worship. Read in the Bible. Mm. Then we find that 
Jesus preached the word unto them. With such an opportunity before Christ, he did the very best thing he could do. He fed them. What? He didn't give them fish and bread. He didn't order a pizza from Domino's. <laughs> My wife said, hmm. Didn't do that. Didn't get something from Sonic's. Did you not have Christ hamburgers? He didn't, he didn't, because he's God and he does all things perfect. He didn't take them to Taco Bell. He knew that was coming. Why would God want to poison them? <laughs> so they could get poisoned, so he could pray for them to get healed, and the miraculous power of God would be seen. Right? Is that a commercial for your favorite place? No. Is that still your favorite place? Yes. Everybody pray for that. Real quick, does anyone here else like Taco Bell? Father God, we have before us a bunch of unsaved people. God, fill them, we pray. You know, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Rahel's looking at her, they're like, do you like Taco Bell? <laughs> I know, pray for your daughter, she needs help. We all need help, amen. I'm only kidding, don't, I'm just kidding right here, right? But Jesus didn't feed him fish and bread. He fed them spiritual food. You know what, it's easy to go to service with home and spaghetti and pork chops and, and, and orange chicken and, and, and whatever that we else got going on over there, but you know what, when it comes to spiritual food, people begin to choke. It's easy to eat the other garbage and the taquitos and, and all the kind of good stuff and come on Saturday and have breakfast, which is all fine and good. But when it comes to spiritual food, people don't like it. But you know what? God began to feed them some spiritual food to help them to live right, some food that will help them to think right. Preacher, we need the same thing in our life. We need something to help us to think right, to live right, to walk right, because we want to go to heaven. How many want to go to heaven? Luke 5 and 1 said, And it came to pass that as the people pressed upon him to hear the word of God. I want you to know, people still want to hear the word of God. How many here want to hear the word of God? I don't know all that's going on in Asbury, but guess what? I believe those people want to touch from God. They said in Texas A&M, this happening there too. People absolutely worshiping God. I think in Baylor they're saying it's happening there too. Well, you know what? I want to get in on it too. I want it to happen here. I can't go to Asbury or to Texas A&M or over to Baylor, but I know that the God that I serve can come to Junction City and we can have a move of God. I don't want just taquitos and nachos and hamburgers. I want something from the throne room of Almighty God. Give us this day our daily bread. God, be with us. Yeah. We want real revival. We need a revival that would cause people to come to church and to God. Yes, we want people to come to church, but really we want them to come to God and know the goodness of the Lord. Not because of soup or free food or a potluck, but because the word of God is there feeding the hungry souls of men and women. That's real revival when people come for God. And that's exactly what we want. We want people to come for God. I'm telling you, God is better than the world. Church is better than the barracks. Coming to God is better than hanging out in sin. Oh, hallelujah, God sets us free. Activities are good. They're wonderful. They're great in the right place. Bowling tomorrow night is good. Unless you lose. Now, all these things are good in the right place. But there are no substitutes for God. There are no substitutes for God. Things and activities are wonderful. But they do not take the place of a move of God. Can I get a witness? Yes. When the house is full, 
It means what? Now, we, we go out for outreach, and we need your help. We want you to help us. You ought to be helping us. Amen? And it's more than just having a church attendance, uh, but that means the more people that are in the house of the Lord, uh, that more men and women can hear the words of eternal life. Why would you want to keep it to yourself? Uh, I want someone to hear how that Jesus can save, how that he can heal, that he can forgive, uh, how we want to share that with somebody else. Amen. So when revival conversations came to life, Church attendance comes to life, and then conversion come, came to life. There were some men so hungry for something special that they brought their friend to Jesus. I don't understand why you won't want to bring your friends to Jesus. Well, I ain't mad if they won't come. Ask them again. Now, I got saved, and within about a year, a little less, a little year, about a year, a third of my company had come to church with me. I, they couldn't get away from me. I mean, in my nice, quiet, calm, passive ways. I was there. Hey! They knew. They knew. And me and this brother, our goal was to evangelize our battalion. And we brought a lot of people out. Amen? So these guys, they, they wanted to have something from God. And they had a friend who was sick. And they wanted their friend to receive. Don't you want your friends or loved ones to receive? Yes. Let me tell you something. If we that are here are not faithful in the house of God, how can we, ex how can we expect other people to be faithful in the house of God? Yes. The Bible says that they could not get inside through the front door. Do you see them? There are four of them. And they got this guy in the stretcher. Oh man, the front door is blocked. Let's go around the back. Back door is blocked. Let's, let's go through the window. You know, I really believe if people really sincerely believe that Jesus was coming at any moment uh, and that it could be at any time before he comes, uh, there wouldn't be a church big enough. They'd be out here trying to get in the windows and the doors, but people just do not believe. So man, what are we going to do now? Maybe one of them said, we might as well just quit and go home. No, 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 we're not going to do that. Maybe the guy lay on the stretcher. Guys, just leave me be. Y'all go, go get something. No, no, no. We're not going to leave you behind. So what did they do? They couldn't get in the front, the back, the side. So they decided to make their own door. Amen. They invented the first skylight, if you will. They went up on the rooftop and they began to tear the roof apart so they could lower their friend into the presence of the Lord. I mean, can you imagine that? Come on. And they're going up there and they're on the top and they begin to tear it apart and they can see maybe Jesus was, was down there teaching the word of the Lord and maybe some dust began to fall down upon him. The Bible doesn't say this. I'm just imagining. I'm sure it wasn't very clean. And maybe, maybe people are listening and they're making noise up there. Maybe someone like, who in the world was going on up there? I'm trying to listen. Some old blue-haired lady sitting there, you know. And and the dust begin to fall. The particles begin. We can. I, Jesus already knew what was going on. And maybe he said, I'm just going to let them do their thing. Maybe you kind of step aside a little bit. And next thing you know, there's a little bit of sunlight coming through. And next thing you know, there's more sunlight. And all of a sudden, there's this big old bright light coming up through the roof where the roof used to be, I should say. And I can imagine these four faces looking down like this. Jesus maybe looked up and these four heads looking down at him. Next thing you know, here comes the stretcher. Now, the hole had to be big enough to get the stretcher through, right? So the guy wouldn't fall off. So it wasn't just a tiny hole. Next thing you know, because you had people standing there like, oh no, what's the Lord going to say now? What's going to happen? And so I like this. Jesus saw their faith and he told the man who was sick to get up and he forgave him of his sins. I want you know, he was lowered down. He couldn't walk. He was sick. And Jesus said, run, get up. And maybe the guys on the top begin to shout and begin to rejoice. And they brought their friend and their friend received a blessing. I want to bring my friends so that they can get a blessing. Yeah. They all of a sudden, when they couldn't get it, now they got their center action right there. There was true conversion. This means there was a change. He was paralyzed. Now he could stand up. Can you imagine how it must have been you were paralyzed? Now you can walk. Because you're paralyzed for a long time, your muscles begin to atrophy. 
And they're not strong anymore. But when Jesus heals you, Jesus knows how to do it all the way. Amen. He doesn't just take away the problem. He heals it all the way. And the man who was paralyzed, man, I could stand up now. He was discouraged. And now he was encouraged. He was a sinner. And now he was forgiven. And we've come into the presence of God, a sinner. And maybe we're downcast and discouraged. And maybe spiritually we couldn't stand. Oh, hallelujah. When Jesus forgives us, we stand up and say, now I can walk. I can hold my head up high. Because no longer am I walking. Walking around with the burden of sin. I have been delivered. We need a revival on the rooftop. We need Jesus in our lives. And I love this because conversion and salvation is available to all of us. Amen. I can tell you right now that Jesus makes a difference in the life of a man or a woman. I get up here and I preach and do things and you just sit there. But why not tonight, tonight, get up and receive the blessing that you need. Maybe you don't want to come to the altar. Maybe your friend will say, come on, let's go to the altar together. I'll take you and we can have a revival together. Amen. Salvation and true conversion only come from him. What would happen, come to the instruments please. What would happen if our conversations came alive? Amen, right? What would happen if our church attendance came alive? Would there not be more conversions for the glory of God? We can do our part. Very familiar portion of Scripture, Second Chronicles seven fourteen. If my people, that's us, right? Which are called by my name to humble themselves and pray, seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways. Then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will hear their land. Amen. Heal their land. And tonight, we need a revival. I don't understand we're not in revival yet. Why do we have to wait till Tuesday? Amen? Amen? We need a revival on the rooftop. We need a revival in our hearts. Let's make it happen for Jesus. You bow your heads and close your eyes and reverence the Lord. She's going to play and sing. But you know what? You don't have to wait for me to tell you. Get out of your seat.